right in front of the goal, and it's in. Gentlemen, welcome to the Confluence Financial Partners Stadium. It's a beautiful evening here uh, to watch Peters Township versus Brashear. I'm joined by Mr. Eric Smiga. Hello, how you doing, Shannon? Excellent, man. Excited to be here. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming up into the booth. Yeah, thanks for having me. You, you, uh, you are part of a new generation of announcers and a long, long tenured line of color commentators up here. I have a feeling I'll be better on the color than the announcing, so uh, I'll probably <laughs> stick to that side of it, but I'll do my best for you. No worries, man. We have fun up here. Uh, and I know for uh, 80 individuals out there uh, that are watching us on PTTV, I'm sure they'll enjoy your commentary. 80 million or? <laughs> no, just 8 zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll eight, work on that. 8 zero. We, there's always room to grow. You this know, should be a highlight reel game for us, though. 40 of those views are also Matt Hoy, typically. So, Well, Matt, yeah. thank you for watching, and please watch more than 40 times. <laughs> All right, well, we have Peters Township playing Brashear today. Uh, Brashear is an independent team. Uh, they are currently 8-3, and three, still awaiting uh, where they're going to wind up in their playoffs. Um, but rumor is they may be up in the uh, Erie bracket. And we'll, we have them playing Peters Township. Peters Township has secured the number two position overall in quad a and the number one position in their section um and they are their record is what 12 and 13 and 2 coming into this game we were just discussing before we came on uh this evening that the committee will meet tomorrow night to determine where and when games are uh the first play-in game could be as early as Thursday evening, as I understand it. Is there a play-in game, Shannon? I'm not real familiar with that. It's a good question. Last year there was, and depending upon the standings with both sections, uh, there may be. Uh, so stay tuned and check the Whippeo website tomorrow or Thursday morning for more details. Aiden Weiss with a nice step there. Sends it over to Gable Hart. Looking to feed in the middle. Trying to connect. Shannon, would this be our typical starting lineup that you've seen for most of the year for the Peter Township Indians? Looks like a, a fairly typical, with all of our starters in place, and a fairly typical shape as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. So nice prep, hopefully, for the uh, 
for the playoffs. We'll see how the game unravels here. Looks like Mason with the uh, the captain's band on, over there, huh? 23? Is that? No. That's uh, Connor Hoy. Connor. Oh, all right. Connor and Hoy in it. So there's 41 views from Matt. Yes. I know uh, Connor has made good old Matt Mr. Hoy very proud over the years with his soccer accomplishments, including that, uh, that armband that he wears. Always an honor to represent. A newly anointed captain on the team, I believe it was a week ago perhaps, Steven Suchko, okay. named captain for his efforts leading up to, to this moment in the season. <clears throat> it is freezing cold out there, by the way, folks. So just so you know, plays a little... Uh, maybe a little less precise than we're used to. I think these boys are trying to get the blood flowing here. Doesn't look like many of them wore too much Under Armour either. They're they're no. doing the typical high school thing and saying it's not cold, but when it's cold. Right. Up. Oh. Little chip. Little chip over the top there. Number nine. Nick McGee. Did you see offside, Steve? Yeah, I thought I saw offsides too. I'm surprised it played through. You know. You know who didn't see offsides? Yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> Guy on the sideline there. Yeah, he let it play. All right, we'll take it. Yeah, well, we'll see how that plays out during the game. Could be interesting going opposite directions in the second half as well. Ball's kind of bouncing around. Like Shannon said, there's not a lot of uh, flow to the game as of yet. It seems a bit choppy out there right now. Maybe just trying to find the magic formula. Steven Suchko is going to take the throw at the bottom <coughs> left of your screen. Trying to find foot up top. Can't connect. Right, the Melican boys there. Booted away, but back into the zone by Connor Hoy. Ooh, unlucky touch. So Alderdice lost to Bethel 2-1 to one last week. Yeah. Alderdice wow. or Brashear, you mean? Oh, uh, Brashear, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you remember the score of the Bethel game? I don't off the top of my head, but for us, for yeah. Peters, yeah. Oh, here we go. A little something happening here. Centering kick deflected away by Brashear. So far, Brashear just kind of working in the box, trying to keep good shots off goal there. This game's been played largely at Peter's end so far with 34 minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half. It almost looks like it's rain. I think we just distance. started a little bit of rain here. Oh, geez. For the game. Yeah, we're going to have some frozen kids here tonight, folks. Yeah. This press, uh, press box thing's not such a bad gig. <laughs> not in these nights. Do we no. sell tickets to sit up here on rough nights, or how's that work? You should. Uh, is that? In the box play here. Mason Lewis that tries to put a head on it up in the box. Just fell off Nick McGee's foot to a goal kick. Once the playoffs start, start, how often are the games? Do they are they every week? Or are they more than once a week? Or how does that work for typical playoffs for varsity? So, <clears throat> playoffs will be wrapped up by that first week of November. So they move pretty quick. Yeah, they move pretty quickly through it. Let me get my gloves out of the way, and I'll reference uh, Whipple's website. Gotcha. Coming down the line here. Centering pass. Looks like our first corner of the game coming up here. We have Matt Milliken who's going to take the corner kick. Peter's coaches seem content to let the boys call this play on their own. Lots of boys on the goal line right currently. They're going to do that little pop out from inside the uprights. 
goalie got it off the hands, cleared away safely from one of the Brashear defenders. Such goes there to collect. He might take. Yep. He has a take and collected by the keeper. Yeah, so on the Whippeal website, playoffs start as early as Thursday the 20th mm -hmm. and should be wrapped up by Wednesday, November 2nd. Okay, so it's a hustle. Uh, the finals for... There's a potential goal. Nice save by the keeper on the crosser. Trying to catch Nick McGee on the crossing there. The championship for Whippeals will be at Highmark Stadium in Pittsburgh. And Get your tickets be, now? Yes, please. Okay. Oh. Especially if uh, your team wears red and white. Amen. The 3rd, 4th, and 5th of November is when that's scheduled. Got a nice sleet falling here. Um, looks like that bench uh, cover that uh, Peter's bought last year. Certainly paying off for the boys tonight. Were you involved in the purchase of that, Shannon? Uh, uh, I, I, I did help. Uh, with that effort, yes. Unfortunately, there was not a sponsorship opportunity on the back of it. The boys, the boys, <laughs> thank you. Oh, well, collected. Oh, fielded by Weiss. Over to McGee. Defended away. Definitely put some pressure on the uh, Brashear boys here. I'll have to see. Let's see if they can get a positive outcome out of it. A little slip there. It's our first slip in the uh, sleet here. One of the Brashear defenders. This is some ugly soccer weather. This is gross. This is football weather. Another save by the keeper. Great shot by Milani coming from about the 20. We've got a golf cart race going on on the sidelines here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I think that's Chuck over there who's going to take the win over here. Mr. Helbig, good race. So the past couple of Peter games, Peter's games have been all about the first goal. And I think tonight will be no exception. Whoever gets that first goal through is likely to have some momentum flowing. Momentum's a big thing in high school soccer, there's no doubt. Boys really change their attitudes when you get that first goal. Barry's looking up top to McGee. Peters maintains possession. Suchko is going to throw out of the bottom left of your screen. Ah. Should be a Peters ball again. Uh, possession switches. It's refs having refs having a little bit difficult time in the rain seeing the plays. I feel. Do they have instant replay for this game tonight, or did they <laughs> forego that? You have to wait about 48 hours, but yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, okay. it's replay. Okay. It's just not instant. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Place header by Mason. Booted away. I'm trying to pick up what kind of uh, line of Brashear is doing or what kind of positioning they're doing here. Seems like they're packing the box a little bit, staying back. Yeah, it's uh, almost hard to get a sense of their shape. Yeah. They've been down Ooh. at their end almost the entire game. Yeah. Such good with a throw. He tried to flick over the top. I think that was the Lewis. We're just moving furniture around up here tonight. <coughs> Don't mind any of the uh, the audio issues that we're having. Ooh, oh, sounds good to me. I thought McGee was going to have a jailbreak there. So, Shannon, while we talk more about the playoffs, while we wait for this game to kind of find its momentum, uh, any injuries on the uh, varsity, Peters varsity, that you know about concerning things heading into the playoffs? Are we pretty healthy going in or – we we are. Uh, the only exception to that is Nathan Froelich, who's sustained an injury in training back in August. Yeah, he hasn't really... played a game, I believe. No. Yeah. Um, 
but aside from that, the boys are relatively healthy. I know a couple of bumps and bruises. My boy had a broken nose at least once. But, uh, from you know. soccer or girlfriend? <laughs> one, one, once each. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, he he reports that everybody else is you know in good spirits and you know no injuries to report. That's wonderful. That's a great way to get to uh, the playoffs. You have to wonder how he'll play this game. Coach will play this game if we get a lead, trying to keep everybody healthy. If playoffs are starting very soon, if he's going to make some significant changes. But first things first, Peters needs to put a couple in the back of the net here. Yeah. Play has been almost, I'd say, over 95% in Brashear zone, but yet still have been unable to get one past the keeper. Couple nice balls up top. Aiden Weiss, uh, just a lot of back and forth. Peter's back line does not like it when the ball is in their end. Doing a good job containing it right about the 50. Another quarter coming up. Looks like we have Matt Milliken taking the quarter again. Is that pretty common for him to take it off that side? It's either he or Milani, <clears throat> depending upon what they're going to do. Looks like they're playing this uh, push in versus the pop out. Who typically makes the call for the quarter play? That's a good question. Oh, what that was great a close, header. Close header there. That might have been off Parker. I'm not sure. Parker Weiss or Aiden, like, they were right next to each other. Yeah, it looked like it was. Who do you think, Shannon? Typically, I, I would bet that Mason Lewis is making the call as to if they're going in or out. Okay. If it's a uh, if it's player choice, aside from that, it may be Lucas, coach. I feel like they're ready to strike here. Looks like it. Yeah, let's see what we. They've been applying get. pressure. We got 25 minutes still left in the half, and ball's been down there the whole time. McGee sends across. Nobody home. We got another corner coming up here. You got to think we're gonna. Capitalize on one of these corners coming up soon. Any of the boys interested in playing soccer in college? Do you know any of the uh, the seniors on the team? I know there's there's a lot of interest. I kn the only commit so far, I believe, is Connor Hoy, who's committed to Waynesburg University. Okay. Um, aside from that, I, I know there's a lot of um, another corner coming up here. Long deep up. ball for the header. Ugh. Can't connect. Yeah. Seems like the wind might have knocked that down. He jumped up and it actually hit him in the shoulder. Yeah, I know several of the boys have been at ID camps and something tells me we'll, we'll learn more about that as uh, the rest of the season winds down and through the winter. For sure getting a little something. Opportunity passes. Ball's kicked out with Peter's own. Back down at Brashear's end. Looks like they're going to let that go for the goal kick. So I understand we had a decisive JV victory yesterday? Yep, last night up on the uh, PV field. Nice, brisk night with the wind kicking. Um, said they played Central Catholic in uh, with a 2-0 victory. Uh, Real good game. Peters dominated the play. Um, had a lot of good scoring chances. Finally put it in. Um, uh, Pusateri put in both goals in the second half. Uh, probably about two or three minutes apart to seal the win there. And that was the end of their season. Had a real nice season from the boys. We have a few injuries on that team. But overall, I think uh, it's a large sophomore class and a lot of skilled players coming up. Uh, probably for next year since we're losing a fair amount of seniors. I know uh, Jim Masucci and I and Matt Hoy and I, we've been commenting on, you know, the contributions that a lot of the underclassmen have been making. And it's uh, they've really added a spectacular dimension to, you know, the advancement of Peter's uh, varsity team this year. Some seems like there's some great talent up and coming. Yeah, I would agree. We have a lot of a lot of good players on the uh, sophomore grouping, and a couple freshmen that I know. I don't know all the whole freshman class, so I don't want to speak for them. But a couple of the freshman boys that are playing with us, uh, um, definitely 
definitely think the future is bright for Peter's varsity uh, soccer. And uh, Joe Jay was coaching him up. Looks like we're going to have some changes here for Peter's. Looks like four new players are coming into the game, maybe to pump it up. I see, I think that's that's Jevin. Uh, if you could see that, I think that's uh, Jevin over there. I think you got Adam Sandrowski, perhaps. And I'm not sure. I have to see as they get a little bit closer. It looks like a Paris in the Sawich. Yep. I would agree. That does look like Priest. Priest is affectionately known as Beebs to me. I would really like that name to stick for the soccer team. How do you get Beebs? Well, he's been a friend of my son since he was a little boy. And essentially, um, he always had that just a Bieber haircut with the <laughs> flip over. And I refuse to not call him Beebs, so he's stuck with it. So, I like uh, it. Yeah. He's going to get that from us from now yeah, on, Yeah, feel too. free. I scream it during the game. Beebs. He answers. <laughs> yeah. He's had himself a heck of a season, by the way, too. So uh, in the JV, on the JV season as well. So, yeah, he's a clutch player. Here we go, Gable Hart, a little Big something shot. coming. Nice oh. save by the keeper. Well, that was a a noteworthy attack kept at bay by Rashir. Got some changes coming in now. Looks like the top line's coming out for the most part there. And Aiden Weiss. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. everybody up top. Yep. Brashear's coach was frustrated with that last transition. I think he should be uh, counting his lucky stars. So far, yeah. And uh, his goalie's really playing well, really delivering for him. It was a great shot, great save by the goalkeeper. Let's see if these uh, new players have a little, little bit of pop in their step who can bring one home. Jevin and uh, Biebs certainly have a, uh, losing my word there. They play well together. They've certainly been moving the ball well together. So my, it doesn't surprise me he put them in as a pair. My middle son played with Jevin for a couple of seasons. And, uh, man, ever since he was a little boy, Jevin's been an athletic phenomenon. Let's see if he can put something together here. Another corner kick coming up. I'm trying to keep an eye on who's calling what. I don't know, Eric. Yeah. It, it looked like it was just kind of automatic. Yeah, they just kind of made a move there. I haven't heard a, I haven't heard a call. No. I will say Connor Hoy came in for this one from his defensive position for this uh, corner kick. Milani coming out. Looks like a deep looking one Looking for back post. Oh. Just went over the head of Mason Lewis there. Brashear goal kick. It's a short one. Sawich finds. Peeps is headed through. Almost. That's a close play there, gentlemen. On sides, just a little bit too much down the down the line to Adam Sandrowski. At least the rain stopped. Hasn't rained in here yet. No. Feel pretty no. good inside of here. No. Yeah. We should get a coffee maker in here. Wouldn't that be nice? I've been pushing for on-field reporting too. I don't know if we're ever going to get that. <laughs> get some <laughs> coaches' commentary during the game. I think that's a good idea. That might be the first call of the game right there. Looks like a free kick for Peters coming up here. Looks like Parker is going to take the free kick, Parker Weiss. He's become a specialty at these free kicks from about this distance. Oh, another great ball. Goes wide and right. Just a bit outside. 18-25 left to play. What do you think Marcus has been doing during the game so far? Uh, he's probably lining up his outfits for the next couple of days in his mind. I don't know. He's hollering at people, yeah. getting a little lateral, you no know, footwork movement in. There you go. Staying loose. He's got a little bit of Under Armour up top, which at least he's smart enough to stay warm. Some of the boys last night paid the price for no Under Armour. Oh, I believe they it. Were, uh, there was a lot of shivering bodies. 
on and off the field. They want to look tough. Yeah, they want to look tough, but they weren't that tough. They were just freezing. I'm looking at my son out there. Yeah. No Under Armour and gloves on. Yeah. Oh, jeez, dude. It's a good touch. Looking for Paris. Ooh, oh, interesting. Bicycle interesting. A little kick. bit of a bicycle kick or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Such go. Looking for Biebs. Yep, there you go. There you go. I was going to crack you. Good catch. <laughs> the nickname has been given full permission by his uh, mother, by the way. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, be there. A little bit of a scramble in, in the front of the net here. Jevin almost wound up on a bouncing ball here. There's a nice off the goal post. They called that out? They called it off sides, I believe. That I didn't makes see more I sense. Think, yeah, he called off sides, I believe. It, it looked like it went off the crossbar, so it would have to be an offsides play. Parker Weiss looking for Jevin. Kicked out of the zone. Finds Hoy. Off of Sandrowski. Sawwich coming through the head of steam. Paris collects back to Kelly, back to Paris. He's looking yeah. to feed it up top. Looks like for Logan there, trying to make the player for to Logan. No, no, we got a Brashear sub coming on. The new strike assignment up top. Mapenzi Tuisage is coming onto the field. No, I'm born and raised Pittsburgher, but I'm still a little lost. Where is Brashear? Do you have any idea? It's in the city. Is it a city school? Yeah, it's a city school. Is it towards the north or no? I I didn't think so. Not trying to put you on the spot because I truly don't know. So. Yeah, uh, born and raised as well um, with a lot of time spent in the city. And geographically, I'm, I'm a bit challenged to yeah. connect where Brashear is. I want to say it's out on the east side of the city. Okay. Like the Norwin area. Uh, not that far east. But, but yeah, headed out that way. Paul's just being kind of kicked back and forth. Not a lot of flow so far in the past couple minutes. So Peter's style of play often leads to a, a question about endurance and conditioning. Great ball over to Suchko. Yep, Suchko. Suchko's going to come across. Kelly's there. Jevin. Jevin's got a big foot. Cleared away. Peters gets the throw. Feels like they, they certainly feel like they're pressuring right now, moving with a little bit of pace to their game. Yeah. Trying to get one in here. 14 minutes left in the first half. One of the Weiss boys has the ball there. That's Parker with about four defenders around him. Soft Barry. Come on, dude. <clears throat> yeah, Brashear doesn't have a very deep bench. It looks like they only have maybe a few guys down there that are dressed and ready to go. So it'll be interesting to see if they can. That's a beautiful save in the corner oh, there. Get up. For Peters. For sure thought they had that out of bounds on the Peters player there. Beautiful save. Yeah, great effort by Sandrowski. Yep. Barry cleans it up, tries to put it back in, finding nothing but white shirts. Peters maintains possession with a such good throw. Definitely put, keeping the mental pressure up on this team. Weish tries the flick. Milani's back. Let's see what he does with this. Ah. Milani's left footed. I was hoping he was going to get around, try to get a shot off from out there. It's 
So we're heading closer to Halloween as your son got his college applications in. It seems to be the the, the time they're due. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's done. He's he's, ex he's accepted and he's oh, off to Duquesne. Okay, he's going to Duquesne. Yeah, he's excited. He wants to stay local and All small. Right. Wonderful. And the scholarship helped. So, what's he looking to study there at Duquesne? Well, business. All right, there you yeah, go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hopefully, uh, he'll come give Dad some help here. There you mm -hmm. go. I'm sure he will. So he's already done. That's a nice feeling. It's a great feeling. Yeah. A lot yeah. of these boys got to get their all their college apps in by the next couple weeks. And don't forget, FAFSA is open, everybody. So make sure to complete your FAFSA. <laughs> Public service announcements going on here while we're waiting for some yeah. action on the field. <laughs> Attaboy, keep them out there. All right, this is the first time we've been in uh, the Peter zone here with Brashear on up. I did not see an offsides play there, but he did call an offsides. Oh, not by a million miles. I'm always intrigued by the uh, Did the you way see something different there, Steve? I'm assuming it was an over and back type it of call. It had to have been, right? Because he, there was not a lot going on there. No. But I noticed that the Whipple refs use different signals for penalties than the, uh, than the uh, I don't know, regular soccer refs. Uh, Some interesting ones. And whistles. Yes. So yes. You, you have you have three whistles out there going off at you know any given moment. Yeah. Uh, nice through ball, a little bit too much. Yeah, traditional soccer refs, the AR, the refs on the sidelines usually have flags, and they only signal when they see an infraction. Right. And the and ref can or cannot, or the center, the center ref could decide not to actually listen to the infraction. This could be a nice little. Ball through. Oh, corner kick there. Coming. So far this season, my recollection is we have we've converted two corner kicks. I'd like to see that number increase in the playoffs, obviously. Yeah. There. So we're about two for 150 or so. Yeah. I mean, the JV team might be one for 150. <laughs> With all that talent, you would think there'd be more going in. So here we go. Uh, bouncing around. Got five Brashear players in front of the goal, just basically bottling it all up. Oh, oh. great ball. And Sawich, I believe, was there. Yep. Adam Sadrasi was coming in for a, a header there, but went off Sawich's head and bounced over Adams there. So It caught hair, not head. Yeah, not enough, that's for sure. That's for sure. Lewis brings it down. A little fancy by Paris. Beebs. There you go. Got a whole nother uh, line change coming in. Got to wonder how Brashear feels about seeing the whole line come in a little differently. <laughs> this looks like our starting formation up top. So this is Peters at. I think I see Brett Martin in the game as well. Over on the uh, far side there. Left wing. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yep. Uh, and somebody else got moved around. Buried out. So it looks like we're trying to put some more numbers up top. Looks like we're we got Hoy playing the sweep with two or three back. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah, we got all the players sitting up and get through the offensive zone yeah. here. Wind is certainly kicking in our favor right now. Um, if you look at Connor's jerseys, the wind is just whipping towards the Brashear goal. What looked like a bit of a shoulder coming from McGee. Uh, it's ruled incidental. And Peters maintains possession. Entire Brashear team is inside the box. Oh, that's a nice ball. But I wonder how you beat that when you have a whole team inside the box. How you, <laughs> how you get the how you get to the goal? Uh, persistence yeah. or luck. I think that's what we're going with here. Brashear player down. 
Looks Rest like light and play on here. We have number eight down, and that is Frank Iteka. Looked like the ball caught him awkwardly. Just fall over it. Yeah. No contact. A little bit of <clears throat> roll an ankle or a knee or something. I think it might be more the wind got knocked out of him, honestly. Just he's holding his stomach. I think he took that right in the stomach. Ah, poor dude. And I think that's why uh, Stevens tapping him up. I think it was him who uh, took the wind out of him. He's going to get checked out by the trainers. Looks like we'll likely do some kind of drop. Like the weather? Yeah. I think we're going to get another bout of rain or sleet or something here. It's so funny. <laughs> There we go. All right, it looks like play's going to resume here soon. Drop ball. Kicked in by Roman. Man, we just. Coming close on the headers. I, I really think the wind's playing a role in this with them just missing their headers by just a tick here. Playing with the wind right with now. With the wind. It looks yeah. like with the wind, yes. Weiss trying to chip up top. You got to think Connor Hoy's regretting the no glove look here as he's been sitting kind of at midfield the whole game. He looks chilly. We got another corner kick there. And we have taken that. Can you tell there, Shannon, coming over? It looks like Roman Milani okay. coming over to put a left foot on I'm that. I'm calling this one here. We're going to call him, calling a goal. On this corner kick. It comes a little drop. Brett Martin running in. Ball's oh, deep. Pretty. Oh, pretty. Oh, pretty. <laughs> this is a great close. service. All right, Shannon. So, who do you think gets first goal? Put some fan duel odds on this. Not a corporate sponsor yet, but soon to be. I, I tell you what, I, I bet you one of these underclassmen connect. So I, I want to play the spread a bit. Okay. You know, That's I'm fair. just going to go underclassmen. You're going underclassmen. Yeah. All right. Taking a group. Take like the whole group. Tiger versus the field. You're taking the field? I, I, I think the field. Uh, these underclassmen have just been uh, so productive. And I, I, I would love to see the statistic on it. Who has produced more goals, the seniors or the underclassmen? Interesting. I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Sandrowski. He looks like he's here to play tonight. He does. He looks like he's ready. Service coming through. Uh, it is tough to get the ball in when the entire box is filled with Brashear shirts. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if this was their game plan, but they've certainly just resorted to putting everybody inside of the box and seeing what happens. And we haven't had a lot of just – Crisp shots on goal. We've had a lot bouncing around, but five Brashear players kind of just juggling between them. Got to wonder if eventually an incidental handball happened inside the box with that many players and the ball just bouncing around those boys. That's one thing I would not necessarily want to see this game change shape by a weirdo call like that, like a handball in the box or something, but the refs have played a uh, a big role in some of these games. Nice play by uh, Connor Hoy there. Taking a mildly dangerous ball out of the area there. Lewis trying to change fields. Over to Brett. Brett connects, he gets there. Might have a little bit of an opportunity here. Not all the Brashears are in the box. Keep coming. There you go. Nick McGee takes a hit. That hit right off up. the goalie. and. Goalie looks like he didn't really like the, the feel of that ball coming at him. Probably a rock by now. Yeah. A snowball. Well, well, go ahead, please. please. Thankfully, it's going to warm up later in the week. It's, I don't think there's much option. Right. <laughs> yeah, it can't get much lower <laughs> than this. Not too much. 
I haven't watched a ton of varsity games, so what is uh, Coach Dyer's uh, coaching style? Is he very active during games, or does he uh, do his coaching in the practices? Or, you know, how would you describe his coaching style in a typical game? I'm weighing my words. <laughs> Fair enough. Co Coach wasn't trying to put you on the spot, just, you know, giving a little commentary there. <laughs> I, for those of you watching at home, I, that, that was meant to be entertaining. Oh, there we go. And, and nope, nope. Oh, yep. Did he call? I'm not sure what this was. He stuck his timer. I do believe that was considered a goal. Yeah, Looking the, at the ref and didn't understand his signals. The AR made some kind of like a traveling call. Uh, I'm not sure it's relevant in the sport of soccer. But it does look like the goal counts. And was that... Did anyone see who scored? I think that was one of the Weiss boys. Was that Parker? Let's say it's Parker. That way I cover the under. All right, fair enough. That's cheating, by the way. I don't actually <laughs> consider him one of the underclassmen since he's been on varsity forever. So, you know, we'll have to see how the uh, sports book uh, yeah. does that one. Yeah, you got to know how to make your wager. Did you catch who scored that goal? No. <laughs> yeah, the coaching staff usually has a, a division of labor. You know, okay. uh, the the more enthusiastic commentary is coming from Coach Lucas. Um, some of the more directed uh, items by by Coach uh, Bobby, and uh, you know, generally on a game like today, uh, they're they're going to be pretty huddled up with their game plan. You know, coming out in the, the play of the kids. I'll say this: whatever Coach Dyer's doing, it's certainly working. We got back to back to back section champions, so. Obviously, they got some special sauce going on there. Yeah, I think Peters in general. It's uh, you know, you plant the seed of soccer in these kids so young. You know, there's such a good soccer community in in the township. You know, it's uh, real quick here, Shannon. We got the first corner, uh, first offensive possession for for sure of the game here. You have to see. Um, most of their players are outside of the box. We're as they make the play in, only Peters Township boys around the ball there, and uh, Marcus easily hands that one, handles that one. Probably excited to get the ball, and get a touch, feel that ball. Is with only two minutes left in the half. Tell you what, Marcus has been playing lights out. He's seems, a, seems to be a heck of a goalie. Good, good, bright future. Sophomore, right? Yeah, sophomore. Another sophomore. Yeah, we got a big class. Big class of boys. So Peters has another generation of, of youngsters coming up. There's a uh, U13 age group. These boys are all in sixth grade right now. Oh, great cross. Beautiful cross. Nice play by Brett. It's the first time that I could recall that Peters has fielded four travel teams. Wow. At that U13. age group. Yeah. So, so is that seventh or eighth graders? Uh, that is uh, sixth or seventh graders. Okay. Oh, good take. Field goal. Just a little high. Just a bit high. Was that? Uh, that was uh, Lewis. Lewis. Mason yeah. Lewis there. Lewis with the big take. I'm sure, that wind also contributed to that high shot there. We'll see what happens to Brashear here. I think they've been playing, you know, wholehearted so far this first half with only 35 seconds that remain. Boys are working hard by that team. They're working hard. Had about 20 seconds left in the half. Peter's trying to make oh. a beautiful back pass. Nick McGee with the trying to settle the ball down to take the shot was. Kicked Ten, away by Rashir. Such goes from to try to put it into play. Six, five, four, a little bit of a flurry at the end here. You're not going to be able to get the corner off. We're heading to half at one nothing. Peters Township. Yeah. Second half of Peters Township versus Brashear. It's one nothing. Forty minutes left on the clock. Teams huddled up. Got a brisk wind out there. I don't know if they're huddled up, coming with strategy or they're just cold. Uh, but nonetheless, they're huddled into the 30-yard line there. Brashear's heading out to the field. Looks like we're going to have some changes, a change in net here for Peters Township. Uh, we got Jacob Petro 
in net for the start of the second half. Uh, Shannon, you see any uh, changes out in the field for Peters? Uh, they have not settled their position yet, but any significant changes from the start of the game? Uh, at first glance, no. It seems like they're they're nosing forward a bit, you know, just based upon uh, how they're lining up here. It looks like they're ready to attack into the zone. Yeah. Brashear has a – looks like they're – little bit more of a regular positioning. Peters is just kind of ready to run up there. <laughs> Peters plays the drop instead of the direct dump into the Brashear zone. They lose possession. <clears throat> Quickly gain it back, it looks like. Roman tries to find somebody up top. You got to think Peters is going to want to get a couple early goals here. Settle in. I tell you what, these boys look stiff. They look yeah. cold. You can't blame them. No, they do. I've been watching Connor on the on the back line by himself, just been bouncing around, trying to stay warm back there. Yeah. He hasn't had a lot of friends to talk to today. Keep the blood flowing. Yeah. Even Petro's out to the uh, almost halfway to midfield there. He's way out there. Yeah. I think he was coming up to talk to Connor. All right. Yeah, it looks like they're they're moving the defense and giving them, you know, free liberty to move all the way in the Brashear zone. Some of our holding defenders are now attacking defenders. Looks like they want to put some points up quick. You've been in Peter's soccer for all four years, I'm assuming, with your son, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah and we've, uh, we've grown up in the sport. Spent a lot of time in the uh, PTSA. In I'll, throw ranks. You, I'll throw you a softball first. But uh, have a favorite game of the year for your team or maybe your son, perhaps your son's game, but you have a favorite game you watched this year? So, and, yeah, I'd have to say my favorite game was the Cannon Mac game at Cannon Mac. I had a feeling you might say that. And, unfortunately, I was uh, not at the game, but enjoying the play-by-play -play, um, via telephone when the golden goal was scored by Mr. Uh, Beeps. Beeps. The Beeps. It was a good take. Hey, well, you could always flex. go to YouTube to watch the uh, the game later on. Oh, no, actually, that was away, so we didn't have it. I don't right. know. Right. Cannon Mac. Oh, great ball. Nice shot. So thinking back, and you could take your time, I'll take it for a minute, but do you have any favorite games other than this year that you've uh, you've really enjoyed from the boys or perhaps your son's perspective? Um, to be honest with you, Eric, I think, you know, some of the games that I thought were really interesting were, were ones that produced, you know, a little bit different outcome than – were expected. I know the the Baldwin game at Baldwin, where uh, Baldwin almost looked like it was a Lazarus kind of theme, like rising from the grave. Got a shot from Milliken coming here. We played them at Peters. I, I want to say the Corner score was up. eleven nil, something like that, and we walked away from that game three one, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So it was a, a very enthusiastic game in Baldwin territory. Uh, the Lebo game was another great match. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Roman Milani taking a corner. Peters is uh, outside of the box. It looks like they're going to run towards the goal for this corner. Keeping the ball a little lower. Goaltender came out and took it right out of the air. <laughs> Not threatening. So you were saying the Lebo game was a fun game for you. Yeah, a lot of, uh, of cup players on that Lebo team. It's yeah. always nice to... Uh, to battle with them. Uh, St. Clair game at St. Clair. That was a spectacular matchup. Always the, the close rivals. I'd say a bit of a shocker. I have some friends on the Mount Lebanon team, but a bit of a shocker that they're going to miss the playoffs. I can imagine. You know, some of the boys are pretty stunned about all that. And I'll say, you know, a lot of these local teams, St. Clair, Lebo, um, it's almost like foot. a civil war. Yeah. You know, I would agree. You want, you know, these kids to do well, but you also want your team to win. 
Parker Weiss trying to get service up top to Milliken. Ah, step behind it. McGee. Oh, it's McGee, sorry. It's all right. Looks like we're subbing here. Whistles everywhere. Looks like at the concession stand tonight, we got uh, buffalo chicken dip, walking tacos, and you know all your favorites. So come out here to uh, Confluence Financial Partners Stadium to get some of the best concession stand uh, food in the South Hills. <laughs> Truly good seats still available tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's just a few seats left. Yeah. So if you're planning on coming out for the second half, I'd encourage you to get here soon. So, Shannon, I had the pleasure of doing concession stand on youth night. Let oh. me tell you, that's about the hardest I've worked in about three months. <laughs> that, that's a yeah. good night to be there. Yeah, that, that, was that builds a, character. Yeah, that was a character building experience. <laughs> we went through seven bags of tortilla chips, and I'm not talking small bags. I'm talking the industrial size bags. That's awesome. And man. ran out of everything. <laughs> Literally ran out of everything that night. It was, uh, it was quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Had the offer to come to the booth, but no one would replace me out at the uh, concession. So uh, youth night was fun. If, if you make it through concession duty during youth night without getting hollered at, you, you've done your, your job as a dad in the in the concession stand. Weird. We had one hot chocolate return, and I was not, unfortunately, there for the return, or I would have, I would have gladly have, uh, assisted that customer in, in my feelings about the return of the hot chocolate. What was the grievance? I believe that he felt it was a little too watery. <laughs> a little too watery. People are amazing, man. But other than that, the hot chocolate was a big seller that night. Can we ran out of that, that too. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It was a crazy night. Fun to see the kids out there. They get real fired up for their team. And it was a great game too, so you knew it had the makings of a big crowd. That was Upper St. Clair as well. So big crowd of people that night. Yeah, and that's one of those games where I feel like the refs really played uh, a role in the outcome. I know uh, the first goal scored sort of broke Upper St. Clair down. And I think, uh, you know, judging by the banter in the stands from the St. Clair parents, they, they uh, were not aligned with the refs' Beautiful call. Beautiful ball here. Beautiful oh. ball. Looks like a scoring opportunity ball dropped. stopped it here. And Oh, oh that's nice a wonderful stop. save there. What is there? Who is their goal? we got to give this young man some credit here. I'll have to see if I can get a number on him. But heck of a save there by the goaltender. He doesn't have a number. 99. Is there a 99 on there? Yeah, yeah Max Cotrell playing goal tonight. Yeah. Senior. Did Senior. Good job keeping the ball out of the net. Weiss looking for Suchko streaking at the top of your screen. Suchko trying to work through. Have it to go. Have a uh, your go-to item in the concessions when you're starving, coming from work, running late. You have anything there you order? Oh, I'm all soft pretzel, man. Yeah, you seem all the pretty time. lean. I'm yeah. not sure if you're going for the nacho, <laughs> no. the uh, chemical dip there. No, no. no. I've, I've I've seen some things over there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you go soft pretzel. So, it's a pretty safe bet. Yeah, soft pretzel, yeah. maybe a popcorn if I'm well, really it's feeling crazy. Risky. It is pretty pretty feeling feisty. Nice through ball. Gable Hart gets there. Ah. Uh, he's, yeah. oh, I didn't, and the ref almost looked like he didn't want to call that one. Just slightly out of bounds. You, you had a frozen whistle. Yeah. What about you, man? What's your go-to? I don't know if I've ever purchased an item at the <laughs> concession stand, I'll be honest. But I will admit to having a slice of pizza that <laughs> night that I, I'm not sure if I accidentally paid for a not, but either way, I earned yeah. my money. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Tiny slice of pepperoni that night was pretty good. You a know. little, little uh, belly warmer. Yeah. Yeah. For sure with the free kick. But of all the hot items, I mean, I would probably go Buffalo Chicken Dip if I had to pick one, you know. The, uh, I mean, it's a dip made with love, folks. Yeah, it is. Peters is really uh, starting to get some more effectiveness out of their strike. Got an offsides call. That one looked to be on the margin. Yeah, I would agree. Nick McGee also disagreed, was talking to the ref, but the ref didn't want any part of it there. Weiss and Lewis giving the tag team there. 
That's a good choice by Gable Hart. Passes it back to Lewis. He gives service to Milliken. Back through to Weiss. To Weiss. Weiss to Weiss. Yeah, if you're ever unsure about who made a play, say Weiss. Or Milliken. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. high probability that you'll yeah. be right. Milliken trying to work with it. Brashear clears. That's going all the way down the field there. Deep. Yep. Throwing for Peters. Ten yards from the corner there. So about thirty minutes left in the game. It's kind of interesting how we let it play all the way down there, but didn't have real defenders back, so the ball just kind of snuck down. And remember, the wind's heading that way, so I think the wind just kind of carried that thing all the way down the field. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, for those of you at home, the wind today, it's blowing pretty good from the left to the right of your screen. Do you have a wind meter or temperature meter out there we can read for, for the fans? Cold. Cold. <laughs> and windy. And windy. <laughs> Got a long ball here. Gable Hart finds feet, looking over the top. Saw a streaking McGee, can't connect. It's going to go through. It's Peters throwing. Well, for sure, he's playing some really nice defense. I mean, they are really packing it, but they are really playing tough inside their uh, around their their net keeper, goalkeeper. Yeah, it's kind of a low tempo match, I would it say. It is. Feels a little you bit, know. yeah, a little mentally draining, just slow. Well, it's been a. Oh man! Wow. Once Brashear's again, keeper is all over it. Yep. Brashear yeah. might have two Good players now. Goalkeeper definitely, definitely earned his money there. They get paid. Uh, I think only in uh, Buffalo Chicken Dip okay. and Walking Tacos. I have a feeling Buffalo. there's going to be a lot left tonight. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah. We'll send him home uh, with a full belly. Yeah, but props Let's up to the there. Mr. Max Cottrell, their uh, goalkeeper. Definitely have kept at least two clear-cut goals out there. All right, here comes Milliken. Has a take. Can't get through, cleared away. Barry does the El Toro thing in the, and it ends up with Weiss. He's looking to Weiss. I think that's McGee again, nine, but yeah. Peter's throw. Are the benches heated? I don't think so. No? They, they are body heated. Okay. You would think, you know, maybe something for next year. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. we should do a little yeah. fundraising yeah. drive for that. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Little heated benches. I, I would say the coaches would probably be in full support of that. <laughs> Everybody's in full winter gear parka mode. Yeah, I got a couple layers on myself here tonight. Yeah, the weather does this, and I start thinking we're crazy for living up here. But I like the four seasons. I do. I think you take it for granted if you're in this summer all the time. But I know that's not a – not everybody agrees with that. Plus, I melt in humidity. So Milani finds Weiss. He's looking for Gable Hart. That finds McGee Milliken. The, McGee's looking for the ball over the side Play there. Yep. Got a run down the middle here. Good effort up top. I believe that was Gable Hart. Hoy coming back. Bashir's really not even trying to mount any sort of offense. They seem no. to be content to just stay in their zone and They're keep the game close. Bashir throw. They play the drop. I'm trying to connect a couple of passes here, which they do maintain possession. Just playing little small-sided stuff. They turn over. 
finds Hoy's foot. He tries to clear. Ball finds McGee to Weiss. Weiss to Weiss drop. This is what I like to see. Peters get some numbers up top. Uh, looking for a streaking McGee there through the middle of your screen. Peters turns over. Milani containing around the 40. Finds Lewis. White steps up. Shay, I'm going to do some uh, fans at the stands interviews for a minute here. Yeah, great. All right, yeah. Love it. Oh, look, we found some fans. <laughs> and what's your name? Lily Kale. How you doing, Lily? I'm good. How are you? You've probably seen every game this year? Uh, only two. <laughs> only two games? So you and I have been in here for both games together? Yep. All right. Fair enough. Yep. Do you have any favorite players on the team? Um, No. No. Could have could have bit her into that. Friends on the team, but right, I don't. Who's one of your friends that you like to watch on the team? Um, Adam Sandrowski. All right, all right, very nice. Seems like a nice guy. How about you? Do you have any fa friends on the team? Logan Solwich. Yeah, who are you? Bailey Kitsjani. Yeah. <laughs> How's the game going here? Give me a brief summary of what you think about the game. I don't understand soccer that much, so it's like really hard to comprehend. But I mean, you get that the ball's supposed to go in the net, right? Yes, I do get that. I. Do. Do you watch hockey, like NHL hockey? No, no, I do not. Do you have? A, do you watch any sports? I watch football. Okay. Football. Okay, what's football? How about for you? What football, you baseball, yeah. No hockey. No. <laughs> All right. All right. And you ladies are on the. Uh, I assume this is the AV team, or what? What do we call this? PTCT seven. Okay. Very nice. And have you guys been doing this all the way through high school? Yes. Yep. Anyone gonna make this a career or? What's the thoughts? Um, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, so. No. <laughs> no. Definitely not, no. Definitely not. So we have two ladies here who don't like to watch soccer, who are don't really like to film it. Um, and they're they're excited to be here, though, in this cold weather. How's the buffalo chicken? Been? It's great. I, it's really good. Do you know which parent made it? No, I don't. No. Did you try it? Yeah. I'm just really hungry, so it was really good. There you go. <laughs> All right, well, back to the game. Well, thank you both. You guys are wonderful. And good luck in your uh, high school careers. Yeah. So how, how was it down there on the uh, in the stands, Eric? It was pretty light. I mean, I found two very nice Peters Township ladies here, you know, um, enjoying some, uh, some food, watching the game, learning the game of soccer, learning the game of soccer. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, they're doing a good job following the action. They always do. They always do. Milani putting some pressure on. Finds Gable Hart. He's Definitely looking up top. All right, here comes a good strike with some numbers to it. For sure, it looks a little flat-footed right now. You would think we could strike if we could. We got some new players coming in over there. Might be the same exact substitution pattern if. I don't know, my eyes look, looks like the same four coming in from the first half. Yeah, it's a Kelly Paris and Drosky Sawwich combo. Yep. Giving the guys up top a little little rest, some fresh feet out there. This has uh, been a great differentiator. Oh, a ball centered. The goalie's way out. Bring it down, boys. This should bring some subs on the field for Peters. And these underclassmen. Top line. Taking out the top top they've, line. They've been very effective on the strike. All right, I'm going for a Sandrowski goal here. Sandrowski? Yep, going for a Sandrowski goal. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call a Kelly goal. Okay. I'm not against that call. What do you Kelly, wager? Kelly's got the ball going in for a corner. Hmm. I will raise you a BCD <laughs> for a pepperoni roll. Deal. Deal. I like it. <laughs> All right. So it looks like uh, Sandrowski has the uh, corner kick here. Boys are packed inside the net this time. What you call that? The pop out? It's the pop out. Yeah. All right. We'll see what happens here. Sandrowski puts it into play. It's hanging. Goaltender punched it out. Is that Nick McGee? Is that who I see there? No, Roman Milani with the ball there. Roman way into their territory. 
chipped away. Looks like Barry's going to run it down. Ball's on our side of the field. There was only one Brashear player within 20 yards of that ball. All right, Peters is going to collect. Ooh, nice ball. It's a little trouble finding feet. Maintain position. Ball over on the right side of the field there in Brashear's corner. Yeah, some concession stand uh, food sounds pretty good right now. It's like, is it dinner time, right? Oh, it's dinner time. Yeah. yeah. It's a unique game start, 4 o'clock for varsity. Don't see that every day. No, I, d I wonder why Brashear plays early like this, but. Well, maybe they're smart since it's going to be even colder. Yeah, now. honestly. Oh, great ball. It's on Strasky's foot. Uh, What's the call going to be here? Not sure. Yeah. Oh, geez. Looks like a penalty kick. What are your thoughts on that, Shannon? Well, Lord knows I, I love the opportunity, but it, it looked like a little soft. Uh, to me, it looked like it was all ball. Maybe you played it when he was down, but. If you play it while you're down in the box, is that a penalty kick? Let's ask our resident. Uh, I don't think it it's a be dangerous. Has yeah. to be dangerous play. It wasn't dangerous. So I don't know what they're calling. I mean, it's not a rough foul. We're great. But Who's going <laughs> to get to take the penalty kick? Is this. Here we go. Here we go. What were you saying earlier tonight? So this is uh, number 34, Nevin Berry, the last senior to put a point on the board for Peters Township this year. Number one in one of the commentary taking the hearts. PK. Yeah, yeah. There he goes. The wind up. There hey, how about that? There you go. He and did he, it. <laughs> there it is. Last senior in all the Peters Township benches up cheering for him. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Good for him. So, I can hear his mom from here. Is she in the stands? She's in the stands. I see some lady doing the wave over there. Is that her? <laughs> that's definitely her. So one goal in the season for Nevin, huh? Yeah, right. how about that, right? Let's get his, that ball. His third career goal as a defender. Okay. Now now he could uh, sleep at night. Sleep at night, honestly. <laughs> that's been haunting him. Good for him. Yeah, it was a beautiful <laughs> shot. Low into the left. On a questionable PK. That's not his fault. The Barry household. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah, heck yeah. We definitely will take it. Not sure what the hold up here was. Uh, what's going on? Not sure. Man, it looks like field hockey is uh, starting the stage. I believe yeah. that's field hockey. It's poor kids. Some ladies with large bags. Those are ginormous bags. Yeah. Body bags or field hockey bags? Not sure. We'll find out later. Yeah, I'm not great on some of those calls. Like, I don't know exactly when it should be a PK or not inside the box, so I'm not sure how to comment on that. But it looked like the Brashear player was down. Ball was near him, and Sandrowski tripped over him yeah. trying to make a play on the ball. I'm not I'm not sure what the ruling is on that or not. But the uh, Considering play. some of the, the plays that we've seen that have gone without a call. That's you know, a fair it's, comment. It's probably a, a little bit softer. Yeah. Um, this game is a little bit softer tonight, though. This doesn't have the vigor and the vinegar that some of the games the boys have played. Um, and that probably benefits Peters heading into the playoffs as well. Anyways, sure. stay yeah. healthy. And it might be for Brashear, too. If they know they're playoff bound, they may not want to get hurt tonight either. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, both some teams are. Good movement ready. out of the backfield by Mason Lewis. You know, the ball stripped away from him. It's going to get thrown back in by Roma Milani. Finds Jeff and Kelly. I don't know about you, but I always feel, and Captain Ob is here, but, you know, in hockey they say the two-goal lead is the worst lead in hockey. I, I feel two goals in soccer is pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a fan of the one-goal lead. In fact, it almost hurts my stomach. But two goals is typically pretty s steady for a soccer game. Especially with a game like this. There really hasn't been any serious attack by Brashear yet. Well-defended game. Just uh, – I can't see how they get beyond a two two goal deficit here. No, I don't. I don't believe that's the case. The boys have played hard though. The Brashear boys have certainly defended hard, and 
it's not often you see uh, boys of this age stage come back once they get down a couple of goals. It's rare, and that's what made yeah. that one Cannon Mac game so special yeah. for both teams because Cannon Mac was down by two, and then we were down by two. I tell you what, Eric, um, it, it's reminiscent of uh, the Dauphin County game last year during the state yeah. uh, championship uh, march where Dauphin was there to collect their trophy from Peters, and uh, Peters showed them what I would say is one of the, the strongest efforts that I've seen ever on a soccer field to, to win the match and knock them out of the of the states. Were they were they the favorite team? Was Dauphin County the favorite team going in? Yeah, by a lot. Okay. What yeah. was do you remember the final score? Or if we won by one or two or do you remember any of that? I wanna say five three. Okay. It's so, the final score yeah. with a two red cards and about six yellow cards. Oh okay. Being pulled on, on Dauphin. We will not fact check you on that, by the way, on the five Appreciate three. it. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. We'll let that one go. Yeah, they kind of they kind of lost it at the end, and we capitalized. Yeah, that can happen, especially in high school uh, sports. Team that gets down gets a little frustrated, makes some stupid calls. So we I, announcing the field hockey game as well. <laughs> I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> My contract, you know, states that I have to be here if there's a game on. Yeah, I understand. I mean, it's actually you know, Steve. Steve Evans will be here. Steve probably will be here all night, yes? <laughs> That's Girls JV. Soccer, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you are here again. Yeah. Who, who will they be playing tonight? Central. All right. So Central's been making some runs to Peters. Boys last night and ladies tonight. We have about 15.30 left in the second half. Yeah, the pace of this game has really fallen off of a cliff here since that second goal. So. I need to bring some film material material for this game, I think, you know. Yeah. I have to do a little more research before the games. Ref called the classic lift the foot up with the throw in. We had some unique throw ins last night. I, I swear some of them were illegal, but once again I don't know the rules that well, but they were coming off the from the side a lot and he was whipping them from one of the boys from Central, but I thought you can't come off the side but like over the ear or something like, like that. Kind of like right by no. the ear and he was whipping them, but they didn't call it. Who knows? Yeah, whippy old sort of has a different version of the rules versus uh, U.S. youth soccer. I've noticed that. Yeah. 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 Especially when you can throw one in about 30 yards in whippy and about 10 yards in youth soccer. And it seems like a lot of the whippy old refs are a little less decisive with their, their calls. And um, I don't know, it almost seems like there's – more room for interpretation of their call and more challenging of it. Gotcha. But I'm correct in their multi we'll get there. beautiful play there. Ah. Almost. Am I correct that they've refed multiple sports though? I don't believe they're just soccer refs, sir. It, it, it seems like it. I, I, we saw a traveling called here a couple of times tonight, and we just go with the flow. Got a player for Brashear coming in, number 17. Jeez. Oh wow, that went that way. <laughs> it 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 looked like uh, Steven Suchko came over top of the Brashear attack, and the refs Free called that the Peters. other way. No one seems to be complaining on the field from either team. Yeah, play what they give you. Oh, nice ball, looking for Aiden Weiss up top. Yep, yeah, into open space, just played out in open space. I didn't down in the corner. See if he guarded by three Brashear players managed to get it back over to Beebs. Oh, nice take. I think that's three Lewis. points. Yep. A little field goal. Strong take. A couple Just players. A little bit up. Just high. a bit high. All right. We got Beebs had an off and Logan Sawwich had an off. And uh, we have uh Campos. And was and that one of the Milliken guys? Another Milliken. Yep, Alex Milliken coming into the game. Both up top. A couple of seniors. It's up top. Uh, 
Yep. And Sachiko's gonna try to clean that up. Finds the foot of Milliken. He's, He's got a little pop in his game. Looking for Campos up top. Snatched up by Brashear's yeah. keeper. Alex looks like he's ready to play. Yeah, yeah. Coming it does look like it. A little bit of pop. Probably Cole wants to stretch it out a little bit. Oh, There's that, that wind again, that ball there. We're just missing our heads a little bit. That ball went backwards into the corner. Going to wind up being a throw in for Brashear. Yeah, you caught it with the wind. I think uh, Roman just misjudged that yeah. by a couple inches. That's all it takes. <coughs> Rashir might have a chance here. Well defended away by Campos. Another white throw in. Finds the head of Hoy. Campos tries to clear. Just a tick of sustained pressure by Brashear in our, in our zone. Peters Township seems to be calm with it. Ball's been in our, in our defensive zone for about two minutes. Nice play by Lewis. Just trying to put it up over the top. And into the coach's bench. <laughs> it is nothing but coaches yeah, and trainers. Boys have seemed to migrate to one bench. Yeah. Slightly away from the coaches. The Chiefs in one tent, the Indians in yeah. the other. You think we would have done teepees instead? That would have been kind of nice. I'm sure yeah. that would have got a lot of press in the uh, local <laughs> news. You're right. I don't even think we're supposed to mention that we're an Indian anymore. <laughs> oh, great ball up top. Coming over. Defended away by Brashear. Ah, they're able to clear. It's a good centering kick by Sindrowski, I believe. Uh, he loses his footing. That's Dante uh, Pusateri over there. Oh, it's Dante? Yeah. Or in shoes, he had our two goals last night. He was playing against some relatives where some of the coaches are central, so he had a little extra uh, pop in his step. That's great. Yeah. yeah a little yeah. Uh, family rivalry Yeah, a little there. family rivalry, and he, uh, he made it count. Had a smile coming off the field. <laughs> I was standing next to his dad for the whole game, so got to, got to see him coming off in a pretty good mood there. Well, I'm sure Ron was beaming. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Really nice goals, strong. Aiden Weiss trying to go up top to find Pusateri. He collects, maintains possession, plays the drop. That's Caden. I didn't see Caden come in, but he's in the game right now. Caden Hensler. And we'll give props to Caden's grandmother. I don't know, do you know Kathy? Tell me about Kathy. I want to know more about her. You can see Kathy in the front row over there, sitting about right at midfield. She sits there with her husband. Okay. I don't think Kathy has missed a single game, maybe ever. A super fan. Yes, a super fan. In the freezing cold, she was there last night. Now her husband's a skosh smarter. He stayed in the car. She came out of the car to watch the game. <laughs> but she does not miss a game, come rain or snow, anything. Sits there. Um, Brad brings down the umbrellas or whatever, but they, they show up to everything. That's great. That's I'm, the kind of grandparent I'm going to be one day. Pretty good. Oh, nice take. I have a picture of her at every game this year because why not? I that's took a spectacular, picture. Yeah. Really? We'll, have a, we'll at some point have a little collage of, of Kathy. That, that sounds reminiscent of uh, Linda and Bob, the Weiss grandparents. Okay. Who were, I, I can't recall a single game, wreck, travel. Uh, high school, you name it, they're they're at every game. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'm yeah. sure that the kids really enjoy it too to get to see their grandparents cheer them on. But I give her credit; it's not warm, and she's been out here two nights in a row, toughing it out. So funny story. It was uh, last spring. It was at PSC, which is another field where. Uh, our rec teams play, our travel teams. Mm -hmm. 
and I was coaching a U14 game, and I look up onto the hill, and I see Jim Masucci and Phil Mellegrain okay. just sitting there. And it was after their you know, youngest children had already sort of completed their soccer career. And after the game, I went up and I asked them, you know, what they were doing there, if they had a relative or something. And they said, we just don't have anything better to do. <laughs> I kind of understand that a little bit. I, I've seen the Masucci's at a couple games this year as well. Yeah. Uh, and, and now being down to my last child, I'm actually understanding it more and more because uh, I'm a little bored. So uh, here I am with you announcing a game that my son's not even in. So. Yeah, that's great, man. It's <laughs> and not exactly, a, you know, the, the pinnacle of games. We right? could be doing a lot worse things with our time. That's right. right? That's right. Are you, and are you sure that Jim Masucci wasn't there, like, scouting your team? Was it a hired gun from a different maybe, team? Maybe, right. You keep an eye on that. Yeah. He, he definitely uh, is, is plugged in to the network here. Are you still coaching? No, I've, I've I hung up my whistle. All right. Yeah, I've How'd hung up feel? my whistle. Yeah. Uh, liberating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How did your son handle you coaching his teams? Did he like it? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I probably coached 30 or 40 teams over the years. Uh -huh. And um, the net experience to me was great. You know, it's great to spend time with the boys, get to know them in a different way. Heck yeah. Um, and I, I think there was mutual respect. So we had a great time. I really enjoyed my days coaching. Yeah. Yep, and they'll always remember that. That's wonderful. I'm sure it's something when he's older he'll probably do for his children. Let's hope, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's cool. It's very cool. Peter's boys are out of the TP, standing up. Coaches have still stayed inside of their, their home. What are these Indians up to? Barry. About five minutes left in the game here. Barry doinks one with his head out of bounds. Brashear makes a change. The boys are getting stiff out there. Yeah, it was he's trying to limber up a little bit. I think it was an intentional doink, though. He just wanted it out of bounds. Intentional just, doink? An intentional doink. I don't think there was really much concern on that ball. Saw a handball. Didn't he's saying he didn't throw it over his no. head? Kind of funny we were discussing that earlier. That's the first didn't throw it over his head call of the year. Good form by the Peters throw in there from uh, Roman Milani. Nice little chip by Weiss. I thought that was going to get through. To Pusateri up top. Ball changes possession. A little something going on up there from Bashir at the top of your screen. I would not want to be kicking a ball with my feet right now in this weather. I'm going to give the boys some credit. I don't believe they had a choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be called on Weiss. Who, uh, I don't think it was intentional, but he kicked the feet out of a Brashear. So a free kick for Brashear. 351 Touch left. Potential for a scoring opportunity. We'll have to see how Petros feels. He's hasn't had a lot of activity. He might be a little frozen back there. Those Boys arms are... flapping, Petro. Ball doesn't make it through. It looks like that was blocked by our goal scorer. Sheer collects. Scooped up by Petro. comes a punt to about the midfield trying to find the feet of Milliken booted away both teams seem content just to kind of run some time out here yeah I think everybody's cold through ball ah almost makes it the Pusateri looks like you got a injury for sheer injury a little bit of contact over there and decision made to stop the clock for the injury timeout. Do they have to stop the clock for the injury timeout? Uh, I believe so. We had a running clock last night. I wasn't sure how that worked. Looks like they're going to sub. 
Still have a player down. A little unusual, but every game's a snowflake here in whippy old folks. <laughs> <laughs> So the injured Brashear player is pulled off onto the, onto the Peters sideline. It looks like they're getting ready to resume play. That's a new rule this year. You can go up anywhere on the field. Is that a new rule? I believe so. Oh. I believe so. Yeah, it makes sense. It's an intriguing rule because if you think whenever you're, whenever you're subbed out, you can come off even on the opposite team side. You would think that might not be ideal if you're a little feisty yeah, coming off on the bench of the opposite team. But you probably, are allowed. Probably depends upon which team you're playing. All right, clock's ticking away with 2.30 left. It's like Peters is just trying to feed that ball up top. Milliken collects, tries to break through, jumbled up, turned over, coming out for sheer way. They get past Suchko, who resets, contains. Brashear ball. All right, out of the backfield comes Lewis. He takes possession. He's looking up top for – no. Out of bounds. He's out of bounds. Out of bounds. So looking ahead, I know you said the committee's got to meet, but do you have any thoughts on who we might be facing in the first round? You got any opinion on that? That's a that's a great question. I honestly don't. Um, we we all know that the, the team to beat is going to be Seneca Valley. You know, as we've we've talked about a lot with our commentary, they just continue to be a major threat and a great source of talent. Um, we won't see them for a while in the playoffs. If we see them, it's likely to be in the championship at Highmark Stadium that first weekend of uh, November in Pittsburgh. It's anybody's guess, though, who we end up playing in the first round. Is it the classic one verse eight, two verse seven, so on and so forth, though? It, it, from what I understand, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, that would make sense. It's a bit of a black box at the moment. There's not much information out there for Whippeo, and I'm too much of a newbie to, to guess. Yeah, I understand. Now, whoever they play, uh, probably going to be a little bit more of an up-tempo game than tonight. Let's hope. If they want to play another game. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the 25 seconds left in the second half. This is... Uh, Very much a uh, – well, let me oh. say it's been a pleasure announcing with you. Yeah, Eric, it's been great, man. Having fun. Thank you. Yeah. A ton of fun. Um, this might be my, my swan song, so – Wow, that's I'm, – I'm honored to, to share <laughs> with you. <laughs> I pass the torch, my friend. All Final right. score, Peter Township 2, Brashear 0. Thanks for uh, watching, everybody.